Soon, I'm almost there. Just please, someone, stop that noise. Please. Let me try and summarize this. Helena Doman was the mastermind behind the entire incident. But Helena Doman was actually PJ Clarkson's son who had severed ties with the family. Helena was also known as Professor R, the mother brain behind the drug known as Saint Rouge. That's right. She was responsible for everything? Not everything, but most of it. Almost everything went according to her plan. But if you'd already figured out that much, why did you continue to stay in Lucare? Because we had to. You had to? Whatever for? The goddess. Was still there. The goddess. The goddess of fertility. Lise Clarkson's body. <laughs> Not her. She was as beautiful as a goddess, but she wasn't the goddess. She was just a tragic victim. Then who is the goddess of fertility? The person at the root of this case. Is it some kind of metaphor? For example, the vast wealth that the red powder yielded? <laughs> the goddess of fertility embodied abundance on the outside. But on the inside... She was a hollow void, and that void was threatening to swallow up all of Lucare. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <sighs> <sighs> uh, are you okay, Mr. Morgan? Morgan almost sounds like a prophet talking about the end of the world. Vague, elusive, and intent on deceiving those who listen. But every now and then he adds an interval of truth. Patricia Clarkson is one of those. 
She's something special. Something irreplaceable to him. It looks like he burned something other than firewood in here. Did he destroy something when he figured out we were coming? Or maybe it's just a red herring meant to throw us off. I know how he operates. I can't take anything at face value. The logs in the center look far more burnt compared to the rest. Almost looks like they were used in conjunction with some kind of accelerant. Did you recently burn something there? It's our fireplace. We're free to use it as we please. I see traces of resin. Which leads me to believe you burned up some sort of toxic substance. It doesn't matter what kind of fireplace you have. Burning anything other than firewood in it is dangerous. Next time, don't burn it up at home. Dispose of it like you would any other non-burnable refuse. Especially if it was something like a smartphone or a USB memory stick. <laughs> non-burnable refuse like a smartphone? Let's be serious here, Belle. That's exactly the sort of data one needs to thoroughly immolate. Remember what you learned at Quantico. I'm so close to finding out where she is. So close now. <sighs> By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? You don't need to worry about that. We're investigating. In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We just need to find some conclusive evidence. Oh, we sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all... So far, you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there, looking for her. Then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No. We don't. But we can feel her. When we close our eyes and become one with the world. It's very faint, but we can see her. We... Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> what do you think we are, X-Men? It's metaphysical offender profiling. He actually asked me where Patricia is? Does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. <laughs> Professor R was a Clarkson, and also the mother of Saint Rouge. <laughs> By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body? After 14 whole years? That's none of your business. Are you saying they just happened to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse by pure chance? That there was some undercover terrorism plot afoot there? I said it's none of your business. Well, then we'll just have to guess. It was an anonymous tip. A tip related to San Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Belle? <laughs> 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 
But that's not what we want to know about. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way, even back when we were on duty. Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much, Bell? What urged you to make a beeline straight for this case? That's none of your business. If Professor R really was the mastermind behind everything, if she wanted to rebuild the Clarkson's legacy, then why did she feel the need to kill everyone? Low-fat vitamin D milk cartons. Why are they all lined up so neatly? This square area enclosed by milk cartons. Is it another sanctuary? The more I look around, the more I feel like there's some sort of system to all this. The sanctuary on this table. The fireplace sanctuary. And the milk carton sanctuary. They all lead into the room back there. And there's one more by the window and yet another by my feet. Are they signs? Or is this all some sort of path? Hey, Belle. Is that a serious question? Of course it is. We're drying them out. We line the milk cartons up to dry them out, so we can turn them into Halloween decorations. Halloween? It's only January. This is America. Land of the free. Got a problem with that? If Professor R really was the master, if she wanted to re... So you think Galena was murdered by Helena Doman, her own brother? No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Yes, but I'm asking you. Would you mind answering me in your own words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. <sighs> it's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. Don't let him draw you into his game. Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. Am I winning here, or... No. I need to stay positive. I have to solve this case, no matter what it takes. I can't lose courage here. The future influences the present just as much as the past. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions. When you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action. And action to inaction. To act. People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. The most prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. And since these are unconscious actions, they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat or finish eating. When you move in to clean up. When you pick up a book or close one. When you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing the actions is conscious of them. 
That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. There's one other person in this house. Isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. You outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Belle. But only half right. Half? You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. You've got real talent. <laughs> Most of what... If this goes to court, I won't let you claim that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. We can even put it in writing if you want. We won't run or hide. Will we, my fairy? Where's the paper? I know I had it around here somewhere. Where, where is it? Oh. 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 We're fine. Hey, everything okay? What's going on out here? Oh, don't tell me. He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. Yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Can you stand? Oh. Is this a sign from the coffee? What, what could it be? What is it trying to tell me? Think. Is that a dragonfly? Footsteps. Big footsteps. Footsteps. Big f footsteps. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. That poor girl, Lace, she was a druggie. And she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess, mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? Hey. We're fine. Just feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. It's in the bathroom, right? Whew. <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan. But so be it. I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? Whatever his goal may be, Morgan's gone to great lengths to survive. But no matter how hard he tries, the heartless monster inside of him will just keep devouring his body. When Katrina stole my family from me, I lost all hope. I wanted to die. What is he hoping for? Whatever his goal, but no matter when Katrina... What is he... 
I didn't think he'd gotten this bad. I can't let him die on me yet. I need to get more clues out of him before his time runs out. I wondered what sort of food he was eating, all shut up in here. Pizza? Why do they all love pizza so much? Agent Jones has been acting strange the entire time we've been here. He told me he wasn't very good at dealing with suspects in person, but can anyone be this bad at it? Is he hiding something? Or maybe our suspect found some dirt on him. Either way, I wish he'd stop trying to drag me down with him. What's wrong, Aaliyah? You hungry or something? Excuse me? What are you insinuating? Well, you're staring right at an empty pizza box. Please don't compare yourself to me. Besides, I have a refined palate. Hey! That was uncalled for. Pizza is a sacred food, remember? You don't need to feel embarrassed for being unable to stop staring at it. It enthralls all who gaze upon it. That's the power of pizza. Stop, Agent Jones. I've had enough of this sacred pizza bit. I'm sick of you Chicagoans and your obsession with pizza. Pizza, 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 24 hours a day, that's all you ever talk about. D Ugh. What's next? You gonna launch into a tirade about how deep dish is the only proper way to make pizza? No, 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 Aaliyah. You just don't get it, do you? As a Chicagoan, I'm proud of the deep dish pizza. But get this. I love New York-style pizza, too. It doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. As long as it's a pizza, it's beautiful. What? Still don't get it? Okay, here. I'm gonna put it in terms that I'm sure even you could understand. All pizzas are created equal. Eat your heart out, Nietzsche. Just forget I mentioned anything. Why do you think he's trying to survive so badly? What does he hope to achieve? What do you mean? He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Ugh, no more Nietzsche. Please, just stop. I feel like my ears are gonna start bleeding. Hey, Agent Jones. Wanna know why I love Nietzsche's quotes so much? Uh, sure. I first discovered Nietzsche in a shelter, after Katrina. At the time, I was shell-shocked, hopeless. I wanted to die. How could a 13-year-old girl go on living alone with her little brother? And then, in that shelter, I met a college professor. His school was damaged by the hurricane, too, and got closed down. He also lost his family, and was living there in the shelter, just like me. So we gradually started spending more time together. I'll never forget the three months I spent with him. He loved Nietzsche. And out of all of Nietzsche's quotes, there was one from Thus Spoke Zarathustra that he repeated over and over again. Better know nothing than half know many things. Better be a fool on one's own account than a sage on other people's approbation. I thought it was a strange quote to hear from a college professor, you know? Why would he think it would be good to be a fool? But I understand what he meant now. He was trying to encourage my little brother and I so that we'd be able to bear the weight of the victim label that was about to be slapped onto us. So that we could go on respecting ourselves without ever succumbing to all the patronizers. After that, my grandmother in Lafayette took us in. And that was the last time I ever saw the professor. 
But whenever I quote Nietzsche, my memories of him come flowing back into my mind. And they give me the power I need to keep pressing on. So I'm going to keep quoting Nietzsche, just to make sure I don't forget my roots. Oh, I, uh, I see. Yeah, I think I get it now. Nietzsche is to you what pizza is to me. Sorry for giving you a hard time about it. You are free to go on quoting him whenever you want, of course. I won't say another word. Agent Jones. What the hell is wrong with you? How dare you compare Nietzsche with pizza? Aw, oh, come on. Shouldn't you look after him? I gave him his meds and let him rest. Let him rest where? In the bathtub. It happened to have a blanket and a pillow in it. What? But why? I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in the tub. I feel like I saw that once in some vampire movie. I don't know what you're talking about. More importantly, how long has he been like that? It's stage four cancer. He's had it for a while now. No. No. I'm talking about his face. It looks as white as a sheet. You can even see all his veins. I've never heard of any cancer side effect like that. Uh, who knows? But now that you mention it, he started going really crazy around the beginning of December. In what way? He changed pizza places. This better not be another joke. It's not, really. It's not. Before December, he always used to order delivery from a Chicago-style joint all the way up near Medford. But one day, he took one look at one of their trademarked red boxes and totally lost it. Red, huh? You better believe it. He started screaming gibberish at the pizza boy and chased him away. Next thing I know, I see him toss the pizza box out his window. Do you think that's when his fear of red began surfacing more prominently? Beats me. I mean, there isn't a better Chicago-style pizza place that delivers around this area. How could someone give up on that just because they don't like the box? <sighs> I don't get it. Were you serious for even a fraction of that story? Let me get one thing straight. You started this investigation based on an anonymous tip, right? What kind of a tip was it? Phone or mail? What does that matter at this point? <sighs> this may surprise you, but these kinds of details really eat me up inside. I always get hung up on the most insignificant of details, especially during the most vital times. For example, uh, you know how people go to bed early the night before they have a big job? That's exactly the time where I start focusing on, on, on meaningless nonsense. Hmm, when did I last clip my nails? How long is my milk good for? I just can't help myself. I can't resist the need to know. It's just the way I am. It was sent in an envelope. Postmark December 28th, sent out from Louisiana. What did it have inside? A postcard with a dragonfly on it. A wrapped sample of Saint Rouge. And a note. Ooh. What did it say? Investigate the Clarksons. F.K. That's it? Yes, that's it. Who's FK? Anonymous tip, remember? It's obviously just a fake name. Did you confirm that? Of course I did. Louisiana has a population of 4.5 million. The FBI database has a list of 6,682 individuals whose initials are FK. One out of every six individuals is a child under the age of 14, born after 2005. 
The remaining 5,500 people include those whose initials changed after they married or incarcerated individuals. After subtracting those, I was left with 3,800. That's when I stopped searching for FK, and I decided to change up my approach. It isn't important where the tip came from. All that matters is solving the case. I got this far by taking the most efficient route possible. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. Thanks. I feel a lot better now. Yep, it all checks out. The letter that was delivered to me bore the Clarkson symbol. A postcard decorated with a dragonfly. The mark of the Clarkson family. A single sheet of paper ordering me to investigate the Clarksons. And... So many records. I guess it doesn't matter what kind of person you are. Everyone loves some kind of music. That's one of the reasons why music is so powerful. Who collects vinyl in an age like this when you can stream just about anything? True. Morgan's got refined taste. You really think so? Now, even I thought they were cool back when the vinyl revival first started. But now? Every suburban mall has its own vinyl shop right next to the novelty store. At this point, it's become a solid component of modern snobbism, which only makes them that much more uncool. People who know nothing about real music are buying them up just so they can decorate their walls with cute album art. <sighs> How do you ever have time to enjoy anything when you're always so busy putting people down? Excuse me? You're like IBS. You keep flaring up at the worst times and there's no end in sight. And when you're alone with Morgan, it's just an all-out war zone. We're in the middle of a very important investigation right now. Don't you think we ought to take it seriously? To me, it just looks like you're putting yourself under a lot of stress for no good reason. Why can't you, you know, show a little humanity once in a while? Does one need humanity in order to track down criminals? Yes, one does. Or at least I do. Well, I don't. <sighs> Come on, Aaliyah. I'm your partner, aren't I? For a few days, at the very least. I'm your invasive partner who has a passionate relationship with pizza, right? Why can't you just let me in on one thing you actually happen to enjoy? No. Oh, Aside from Nietzsche, that is. You know, I'd really rather not. Why do you always have to be so withdrawn? I can't help it if there's certain things I don't like. No, come on. There's got to be some kind of music you enjoy. This is a good chance to teach me a bit about yourself. I said no. Do you like Justin Bieber? Too cute. Not my type. Drake? I've only ever listened to the hooks. Well then, Ariana Grande, Katy Perry. Hell no. Am I done now? Well then, what do you like? Ugh. I have to tell you? Yes, you do. <clears throat> Pink Floyd. No way. You're a prog rocker? Who turned you on to it? Your dad? As far as I can remember, I've loved prog rock ever since I was born. That's just how music works, right? I mean, The Wall is by far my favorite album. Even to this day, I find it hard to believe that they made that in the 70s. It still sounds completely fresh and unique, as if it was just released yesterday and... What? No, I was just thinking, I wish Morgan could have been here for this. Don't you dare tell him. A soft spot? Ugh. He doesn't even understand the first thing about me. 
Ready to spill the beans, Aaliyah? <sighs> I'm afraid of thunder. Happy now? Katrina? All right, I'll stop. Good. Now let's get back to the investigation. No, no, no. Hold on. Now that I think about it, that doesn't really qualify as a soft spot. What I'm looking for is more... how should I say it? Adorable? You know, something that would make you blush. There's gotta be something. Please, I'm begging you. I love koalas. They're just so cute, I can't resist them. All I need to do is look at a picture of one and fuzzy wuzzy swim all over me. I mean, the way they look, the way they're shaped, the color of their fur, I mean, even down to how they only eat eucalyptus. I just love everything about them. Once I get some time off, I'm gonna travel to Australia and hug one for real. That's one of the top five goals on my lifetime to-do list right now. <sighs> this conversation never happened, is that understood? Agent Jones, that chessboard is still bugging me. I don't know why, but it just does. You really think he was playing chess all by himself? I don't know. I definitely think it's possible. How? Maybe he's remembering the strategies an old friend of his used to use. If it's someone he played for years, he's probably capable of recreating their playing style. And besides, Morgan's beaten a Grandmaster before. You know that, right? I read about that in the Greenvale report. Even a computer can play chess these days, right? I'm sure that a Grandmaster level player would have no trouble emulating someone else's strategy. Hmm. Whose chess strategy is he emulating then? Professor R, the mother of this evil powder, is dead and gone. So then why are her demon seeds still being passed down? This drug has already taken so many lives and more are bound to follow. It has to be stopped. So, why did you decide to take this case? Because it's my job. Really? I don't buy it. Why not? You aren't just following orders here. You've got way too much emotion invested in this. Some kind of special emotion. There's no use trying to hide it. Despite how I may look, data analysis is my forte. I know how to see through lies. I don't mean to be nosy, but would it kill you to confide in me a little? I didn't manage to live this long simply because I'm fiendishly handsome. And besides, we're going to be tiptoeing across a thin line of legality with the rest of this case, so I'd prefer to have some probable cause. That way, at least I can back you up when you need me to. There exists in the world a single path along which no one can go except you. Whither does it lead? Do not ask, go along it. You're pulling out Nietzsche at a time like this? Come on! I have a little brother. After overdosing on a certain drug, he was thrown into rehab. He's been clean for two years now, but he still won't utter a single word. All day long, he's plagued by hallucinations. He can't tell if he's dead or alive. If this is reality or if it's all a dream. Saint Rouge? That's right. The doctor can't tell what's causing his condition, so they can't treat him. 
He just told me to prepare for the possibility that I may never get my brother back. This was his. I bought it for him after he graduated high school and found a job. He never got a single chance to wear it, though. Someday, I believe that he'll get better. And I'll get to see him put this on and head out to work. So, you think that if we nab the person behind all this, we may figure out how to conquer the addiction? Right. You really think it'll be that easy? I don't know. But I can't just sit around and do nothing. He's the only family I have in the entire world. What about your parents? When I was only 13, Katrina took him, leaving my seven-year-old brother and I behind. I'm sorry. It's fine. I've already dealt with my past. Now I'm just working as hard as I can to complete the duty I've been given. Yeah. Hey, Agent Jones. I just want to double check one thing. You didn't find anything in the bathroom. Nope. Nothing in there. It must be the bedroom then. Just like I thought. Are you serious about this? Huh? Now you're having second thoughts? Well, not exactly. Uh... Then what? I understand how you feel, but he's got an incurable disease, and he used to be one of us. So? The truth he's given us so far could all be completely fabricated. He's a genius lone wolf agent who solved nothing but difficult cases during his years of active duty. That's what they told me at Quantico, at least. Over and over again, I had to listen to them talk about how no one could ever replicate the kind of work he did. But let's be real here. You saw his face, didn't you? It was inhuman. It looked like the face of a killer who's been possessed by death. Patricia Clarkson is here, in the next room. Only a single wall away from us. After 14 years, he went back to Lucare, kidnapped her, and imprisoned her here. He's trying to complete something big right now. Something that's deeply connected to Saint Rouge. What is all this? <sighs> Pictures of people from Lucare. And this wall is dedicated to Greenvale. All the deceased have been crossed out. Sheriff Melvin Woods. Lise Clarkson? Where's Patricia? That's our altar. What are you doing? <laughs> 